the return of the sun after a total eclipse. It's rising in the morning after its troublesome absence at night, and the reappearance of the crescent moon after the new moon all spoke to our ancestors of the possibility of surviving death. Up there in the skies was a metaphor of immortality. Almost a thousand years ago in the American Southwest, the Anasazi people built a stone temple, an astronomical observatory to mark the longest day of the year. Dawn on that day must have been a joyous occasion, a celebration of the generosity of the sun. They built this ceremonial calendar so that the sun's rays would penetrate a window and enter a particular niche on this day alone. That kind of precision is a triumph of human intelligence. It outlives its creators. Today, this is a lonely place. The Anasazi people are no more. They had learned to predict the changing of the seasons they could not predict the changing of the climate and the failure of the rains. But their temple continues to catch the sun's first rays on the summer solstice. I imagine the Anasazi people gathered in these pews every June 21st, dressed with feathers and turquoise to celebrate the power of the sun. These upper niches, there are 28 of them, may represent the number of days for the moon to reappear in the same constellation. These people paid a lot of attention to the sun and the moon and the stars. And other devices based on somewhat similar designs can be found in Angkor Wat in Cambodia, Stonehenge in England, Abu Simbel in Egypt, Chichen Itza in Mexico and in the Great Plains of North America. Now, why did people all over the world go to such great trouble to teach themselves astronomy? It was literally a matter of life and death to be able to predict the seasons. We hunted antelope or buffalo whose migrations ebbed and flowed with the seasons. Fruits and nuts were ready to be picked in some times and not in others. When we invented agriculture, we had to take care and sow our seeds and harvest our crops at just the right season. Annual meetings of far-flung nomadic peoples were set for prescribed times. Now, some alleged calendrical devices might be due to chance. For example, the accidental alignment of a window and a niche, but there are other devices wonderfully different. Today, only the dry ruins of the great Anasazi cities have survived the ravages of time. Not far from these ancient cities, in an almost inaccessible location, there is another solstice marker, this one of singular and unmistakable purpose. The deliberate arrangement of three great stone slabs allows a sliver of sunlight to pierce the heart of a carved spiral only at noon on the longest day of the year. The wind whips through the canyons here in the American Southwest and there's no one to hear it but us. A reminder of the 40,000 generations of thinking men and women who preceded us, about whom we know next to nothing, upon whom our society is based.